Hi, it's Sarah Taylor, Sarah Taylor Modern Art. Um, I just, I'm gonna show you how I reworked these, this triptych that's behind me. You can see one of them over here. Um, so this is the top of it dried. A little preview of what I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> and I just wasn't real happy with the top of these canvases. Um, but before I show you, I want to have a quick conversation with you about your palette knife. And um, this can save you a lot of time and frustration and make your experience with working with a palette, palette knife a lot more enjoyable if you have the right one. So do you see this? This is a cheap palette knife. It, um, it doesn't have much bend to it. It's, I mean, like this little thing seems to be falling off. It's not a cohesive piece of metal welded together. It's, this was a cheap little set that I had bought. This entire knife is exactly the same thickness all the way across. Um, it's okay, you know, this is fine for doing some things, but for delicate work, um, this palette knife was, I've had it for a long time. It's like my best friend in my, in my, I, uh, I don't know what I would do without it. I'd have to get another one. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it starts a little thicker here and it beautifully goes all the way thinner down to the very little tip. Um, this is one nice solid piece. Um, look how bendy it is. Oh, look at that. Okay, so when you go shopping for a palette knife, please, if nothing else, if you like working with one of these, try to find something like this. Um, it's gonna be more expensive. They, whoever, man, whoever made this took the time to like gradiate the, the metal all the way down. And that's really what you're looking for. And you're gonna have so much more fun working with a palette knife if it's the right one. You can really get in um, and do so many things that you can't do with a cheap palette knife. So I just wanted to tell you that before I show you what I'm about to do um, on my recent triptych that I created as a collaboration piece with Gail Burston. Okay, have a, have a good one, you guys. Talk to you soon. Okay, so this is the piece before, and it's pretty, but I thought for three canvases, the top was just way too busy. Uh, and I was laying down for a nap and because my three kids wear me out and uh, it dawned on me what the top of this canvas should look like. Um, I was kind of tied to this black paint or the indigo. And instead, I'm just gonna take that same, it's a Modern Masters iridescent pearl mixed with a bit of my indigo mixture to kind of gray it out just a little bit. And I'm taking that and I'm gonna bring it right up to the gold line. And then I'm gonna use all the same beautiful colors that are in the bottom part of the canvas. The purple violet is a quinacrinome violet by Golden Fluid Acrylic. The, the blue is Charvin Indigo mixed with some Jenkins Green and Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue. Um, that's Golden High Flow gold, iridescent gold. And then that's a bit of Extreme Sheen Deco Art 24 karat gold. And so I'm just kind of, and I made sure to put the high flow right up to where the high flow meets the high flow. <laughs> where the high flow meets the high flow meets the high flow, right at that edge. Because when it dries, they're gonna look the same color. And when you're working with pieces that are already dry, it don't let it throw you off that the colors look different because once they're dry, they're gonna all look the same. So I'm just uh, spraying some water onto the high flow and letting it drip down the canvas. And I'm using my wonderful palette knife to help me with this process. Uh, if I was using a cheap palette knife, 
my results would not be nearly as as good. I can tell you that for sure. So um, for this type of work, yeah, invest in a good one. You're going to be so much more happy. Okay, guys, uh, I'll just let you watch and I'll show you the dried results at the very end, uh, how this completely turned out when it's actually finished. All right, have a beautiful day and I will see you soon. Bye.